Hello everyone. Hi, how are y'all? Today is um Tuesday, February 14th, 2023 at 9:40 a.m. <sighs> Excuse me. I didn't get to eat breakfast. I not long ago woke up. So like last night I developed the strength to take a shower. So I took a shower, a nice hot, hot shower and washed myself. And then um I didn't I didn't realize that the um the housekeeper had changed out my towels and washcloths in the trash. They must have did that while I was in the laundry room washing my clothes. So since weird stuff always happens to us targets, I feel like it was done deliberate that one of the towels that they gave me, and I accidentally used that one. I mean, you would have thought that they were both two clean towels. That's what we would have been, you know, that's what us guests would have been expecting, you know. So it looked like as if I was one of the towels that I was given was, um, as if somebody took a dirty towel and then just threw it in the dryer and then folded it up like as if, as if it was clean or something. So I took a shower and washed myself and I also brushed my teeth with the bentonite clay. And then when I went to dry myself off, one side of the towel looked like as if it had a light coat, I mean, a light coating of fresh blood on it. And the towel stunk like as if, you know, as if a dirty person had wiped themselves off with the towel. I freaked out so bad that um, I felt kind of traumatized. And it's like I couldn't even finish drying myself off because of the um because of that that towel. So then I sprayed my whole body. I tried as best as I could to spray my whole body with rubbing alcohol. You, you know, I freaked out. And then I tried to. I nearly choked. <laughs> um, you know, suffocated. But um. I went near the the heater, the air conditioner heater, and um, try to air myself off, and it just happened for a few, you know, a few seconds. I was gasping for air, but I'm all right. But you know, um, so I feel so dirty, and um, so I'm. Sc- scared to take another shower because I don't know if the other towel is like that too. So that's why like whenever I make complaints to the front desk of any hotel, they act like as if they roll their eyes or sigh or they're dreadful or make like I get on their nerves, even if it's my first time there and I'm new, like that lady from the other hotel. You know, um, she knew what she was doing, but come to find out, I thought she was just acting like that towards me, but a lot of people had complaints about her. So if a lot of people had complaints about her, then she's a narcissistic abuser. So, um, I would have, I would have, um, not much time to wash myself or take a shower. And it's like lately in these, being in a hotel up here, I've been waking up after nine o'clock. I probably could have woke up sooner, but I have to um charge my phone across the room. I can't have, I, I mean, I, um there's really no plug right next to my bed on, a, on the, um this little nightstand. There's really no plug. No plug right here. So um, I woke up this morning and found out my bag of laundry on the on the floor. Well, it's, my clothes are inside the bag, but 
I woke up frustrated. I'm like, damn, that my clothes fell on the floor. So I feel icky and dirty, like as if I need to take another bath. Like, I mean, like I need to take another shower and wash my hair. Um, from last night, but, um, it seemed like it was a light coating of blood across the half, across half the towel. And, and then, um, and then it, it stunk like as if, as if somebody took a dirty towel and just threw it in the, um, in the dryer and then folded it up like as if it was clean. And then the other towel, I think it seemed like it's clean and normal, but I got to double check. I would hate to um, walk out of here wet and it's cold outside in the 30s. But, I mean, if I can't dry myself off. So, um, the itching wasn't really that bad last night. Um, I tried to spray myself off because of the bed bug thing, too. Um, hoping that, that I would get rid of them. Yeah, that's from that other hotel. So I think only once in Pensacola I can recall that I caught bed bugs from a hotel. Or, you know, um, and they try, of course, they tried to gaslight and lie and say, oh, you brought them there. No, I didn't. But, um, but I can't believe New Orleans had a bad bed bug problem. I mean, and I was constantly, I mean, I suffered almost all of 2018 with bed bugs throughout the whole year. And my sister Ramona, she's one of the worst people to catch bed bugs because Wyatt said that Ramona till this day still have bed bugs that she don't care to get rid of. So Wyatt was upset last year when he came almost a year ago, you know, he contacted me in April <clears throat> and, um, and when he, you know, traveled up to Milwaukee, he said that he was fighting off bed bugs dealing with Ramona, you know, and Sean said that a few years ago, every, I'm like, damn, Ramona still got bed bugs after all these years. That's like David Jane won't do shit about the dog on bed bugs. So, um, <clears throat> Sean said that Ramona would blow him off every time he would make complaints about itching and the bed bugs and stuff. So Ramona's sitting there going by people's house and riding in everybody's car. I mean, I got rid of bed bugs in 2018. And it was a Sunday morning in July 2018, shortly before I became homeless. <clears throat> and I knocked on the door and nobody was there. All The bed bug infestation was that bad that all I did was knock. All I had to do was knock on the door. And then I caught a, I caught a bad infestation again. I'm like, damn. So one time she got mad at me for trying to, um, for trying to, spray the um essential oils and trying to vacuum and clean up and it's like she wanted to force it's like she wanted to um you know revel in the bed bugs like as if she enjoys bed bugs and roaches and filth and, and flies and everything now let me tell you what she did to me in 2017 when i came first came back to my hometown new orleans when um, I had to be on, I mean, I had to go in that sort of Salvation Army shelter to get away from her because, I mean, after a few days, then I ended, then I ended up with the Section Eight housing. Now I probably wouldn't have been able to get into my Section Eight housing, but I guess by the grace of God, Social Security sent me a two thousand nineteen dollar back pay check from 15 years 
because they said that the foster mom committed fraud. Now, see, they said she was the one who committed fraud on the, on my um on my checks and stuff. So um, they sent me um they they say that she committed fraud in which i i mean because they say that she over exaggerated on on the all the bills and stuff that she claimed she had to pay like they said that they knew it was bogus that she she lied and said that she had to spend nine hundred dollars a month on groceries as stingy as she is you know if she had us living off of ham sandwiches and ramen noodles and um Forty-five cent boxes of stale old cereal from um, Big Lots that used to be called McFrugals. You know, and she always would like she would like to shop at the doggone food thrift stores, like the bread thrift stores with the expired moldy bread, and force us to doggone eat it. She wouldn't eat that doggone bread. If she forced us to eat it. She bought it for us and forced us to eat it. And tell us ain't nothing wrong with that bread. And then when we get sick, oh, we're, we're faking for attention. So, um, so that $2,019, I was able to afford to, um, just enough for me to put down the deposit and pay my first month's rent. And, um, and I had to buy up like new um new 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 pots and pans and you know dishes and whatever else needed to you know for my new apartment and then you know but in 2017 just before that Ramona waited for me to come down and she sent for me to come by her house. And then what she did was she deliberately, it was hot in summer, and she deliberately turned off all the, all the, um, she deliberately got all the, um, electricity turned off. Just because I came in town. And so then the, the roach infestation was so bad that we would be out in public and roaches would be crawling out of her purse. And she would over exaggerate and put on an act to pretend to fake freak out when um whenever I pointed it out to her. But at her house, roaches be all over everywhere and, and she don't give a damn. So it's like Ramona and the biological mom Francis, like they had their house, whatever house they lived in would be like heavy roach infestation. But living in Los Angeles I had my own place, and you probably saw like three or four roaches in one year. I, I mean, I'm sorry, in four years. So, um, <clears throat> so I mean, if I'm living in somewhere, I don't end up with roaches unless, um, Unless roaches were there before I got there. But in in 2010, I was extremely depressed. <clears throat> and I had, at two different times, I had a roach infestation and I also had a rat infestation. And it seemed like they wait until after I went to the mental institution. And then I come back with a whole bunch of rats or a whole bunch of roaches. And, um... But I heard that the gang stalkers wait till you're gone to the mental institution or something, and they plant them there. I've heard other targeted individuals say that, you know, about even their own experiences, that they wait till you're gone. So, like, when I had the the um, gnat infestation um, at that motel in Gulf Breeze, people were saying that um the gang stalkers waited until I was gone to work to to plant them there. You know. Now like cuz this is like a bizarre unusual um amount of gnats, you know. 
Like I never had trillions and trillions of doggone nets. So, I can't believe it's winter and it's cold here in Cincinnati. And they would have, um, I've seen flies and stuff like that. I'm like, I didn't know they had flies and stuff in cold weather here. I mean, I thought... I mean, I thought that would have been one thing I would have escaped from the South is the doggone flies and gnats and all. But nope, they got them here too. So. um, Yeah, so Ramona, in 2017, before I got that Section 8 place to live, she had, um, you know, deliberately turned off all the electricity because I got there. Wait until I got there. Like, wait till immediately after I got, after I came in town. Because when I first got there, the electricity was working. And then how later on that day they made it like as if it wasn't working. And so I had to do everything the hard way. But she just sit there and let, manipulate it and let everybody believe that her electricity just magically turned off once I got there. But that's her covert way of making it like she didn't want me there. But it's like, you're the one sent for me to come over there. So, um, but I think at one point, she made it like as if she was wishy-washy or unsure of not if she wanted me there or not. But then, next thing you know, she, um, after that, after that, what she did was she, um, what did she do? She had, um, waited until, like her and my biological nephew, Raymond and her boyfriend, um, her and her son, Raymond and my, I mean, and her boyfriend, Elliot, um, they all got into a heated argument they got into a heated argument and I saw that Raymond and Elliot got into a heated argument and then made up and became best friends five minutes later. Like they argued like very dirty. And then I heard something about how Raymond and some girl or some woman had, um, how they got the electricity turned back on illegally or something like that. But, yeah, I mean, even roaches were even crawling out of my backpack and everything. And when I had to put my stuff in a storage unit, I had to hear narcissistic lectures about wasting my money and stuff. But who the hell wants trillions of roaches crawling all, all over their stuff? You know, and so... um. So, yeah, I had to waste more money in a storage unit. And then, like, they had a, a lady named Ruth Holmes at that U-Haul on Tulane. She was abusive, narcissistic, hard, and mean. I mean, I think I remember she had was, like, brown skin with green eyes or something like that. And she had... um try to force me to allow family members to have access to more authority over my storage unit. And I stood my ground. It took hours, but I stood my ground. I'm like, hell no, I don't trust my family. I don't have no family. And, <clears throat> you know, so um, she might have been a perp too. You know, like, you, so you basically won't allow me to have a storage unit unless I allow someone else to have authority over my unit? Hell no. No, I don't trust none of my family. It's like, well, you have to have some family. No, no, I'm by myself. So, um, that's a, that's one thing that be hard for me to get storage units sometimes, you know. But I didn't even realize that within a few days, less than a week, um, I think I only had that storage unit for like three or four days, and then had to pack up, and then, um, I mean, it came sooner than I was expecting, and so it came up, and then I had to transfer my stuff from the storage unit all the way into to the um the um 
my apartment, you know. So then I think that it took a short little while to get rid of the um, roaches and stuff on my own, you know, when I, once I had my place. But then the fake, crusty, dirty, crackhead neighbors, I think that I had to deal with pests coming from their place. And then they would smoke weed and cigarettes, and the weed and cigarettes would come, the smell would come through my walls and smell up my bedroom. So I couldn't even sleep in my bedroom. I had to sleep in the living room. And it was hard because of them torturing me with directed energy weapons and me so bad that I had to end up in the emergency room. Um, nurses refused to help me. They had all these pregnant, mean nurses that refused to help me. And you're pregnant and you're a nurse and you freaking smoking so heavy. And it's like, they led me to think that they were going to leave me to die of a heart attack. And my blood pressure was extremely high, unusually high. And they were rude and mean and were going to sit there and make me suffer at the hospital on Jefferson Highway in Jefferson, Louisiana. Um, and my blood pressure just kept raising and raising and raising and they refused to help me. And I'm like, these bitches trying to fucking kill me. You know, and um, that I hear a lot of these nurses are evil because they practice witchcraft. That's why they're evil and mean spirited. So um, and I was struggling with acid reflux. I mean, acid reflux, and um, and everything really bad. And then they took away my part of my um SSI check or was it part of the social security check and so I was financially struggling really bad and um I didn't even know I could have turned to the internet for help but um but I mean I had to I mean me sleeping on a blow up mattress and and then suffering um you know acid reflux and then I heard that some people say that acid reflux got a lot to do with the targeting also. And also, um, even when I was living in Los Angeles, I would wake up and my eyes would be super red. And they say that's a sign of the, the, targeting, the targeting as well, <clears throat> to have red eyes, blood red eyes. And you don't even drink or, or do any drugs or nothing. So they had some mysterious and strange stuff happen to me. Um, you know, and then I would feel a lot of pressure on my head or I would be afraid I would be on a verge of having a heart attack. And, um, it was really scary. And then nobody was there to help. Nobody, no comfort, no support, nothing. And I was very much suffering up in that place, in that apartment. I thought it was like a um, triplex or a fourplex house, but they, um, the landlady got mad and said, it's an apartment, it's not a house. She was a narcissistic abuser as well. Her name was Fran F Fusley, and her husband's name was Larry Fusley. So, um, but anyway, so I checked the app about that gig job opportunity. So far, I have not been approved for the gig assignment. I haven't been approved for the gig assignment. So, um. And then I hate with this gig app. Um, they basically, I hate that they won't tell you the, they tell you the city, but they won't tell you the address until after you've accepted the um the job assignment. 
So if I take the bus, I don't know if the bus goes there because I can't even put the um the information in the um in the GP. I mean, I mean, uh, Google Maps. So <clears throat> um, I guess I'm taking a gamble. They say you can, like, if you can't make the job, then you'll be, you know, disqualified from the app. But um, I'm sitting here trying to see what's going on. So um, I'll let you, I'll let y'all know if I can work that gig or not. But so far, I haven't got any approval yet. But in the meantime, you know, I'm still trying to, you know, get help. I'm still, you know, trying to get help and everything. Um, so I have enough money for a couple of meals plus bus fare today. And um, I got to go to the DMV. And so... um. The, the, um, so, I mean, I have to go to the DMV today. So, um, one thing about certain jobs and gigs, when you go to work, the jobs and gigs, if you try to go to work, um, the jobs they um when you, when you try to go to work the, the jobs like me being homeless the jobs they won't even allow you to bring a backpack or anything in the building and I don't have a car so I guess certain jobs I couldn't have because they don't want to allow you to bring it they won't even allow you to bring a purse they tell you leave everything at home but being homeless, I don't have any place to put anything, you know. So even when I was working at Seville Quarter, they had an issue with us bringing a backpack to work and trying to store it in a storage room or something. They didn't even want us to have it at all. Certain jobs, some jobs. And then when certain gigs I worked in New Orleans, about the same thing, you know. So it's an iffy. I'm not sure if I'll get to work a gig this evening from five thirty all the way to two o'clock in the morning. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. So, um, I, I yeah, I think I probably have enough money for breakfast. Well, I mean, I missed breakfast. I meant to say lunch and probably dinner. But um, but I'll try to keep y'all posted and updated. It's now, what time? 10.08 a.m. So, I don't, I guess I might probably can take a quick shower right now. Um, it's hard to try to lather up the small bars of soap. So, um, I'm going to go for now and I'm still trying to request, you know, donations for any, anything y'all can help me out with. And my information is in the description box. So I'll see y'all.